You can hear that cheer for blocks around. It was fantastic. That one point was made by Wild Oats, who apparently is not even a proper jammer. They just fielded one of their blockers because they were just trying anything to try and get some points on Team USA. So Wild Oats is a hero in Scotland today. She's going to go home to the to a ticker tape parade. <laughs> Stepping up to the Jammer line, Derby fans. We have for Team Australia, Bambi Von Smasher in the green and gold, number 411. You can notice uh, this uh, big strategy this weekend has been for both packs to be starting hard up against the Jammer line like this and that scrum formation. We've seen a lot of this over the past few days. The, pa the two packs form up tight and the Jammers have to shove their way through. It reminds me of a game of rugby, to be honest. <laughs> Indeed, Team Australia starting off in a math proposal, dropping to a knee, but letting it go. Neither Jammer with the, the advantage. Marla Mayhem trying to find a path on the outside, but doesn't get through, gets recycled to the back. That's right, Ruby Rib Crusher held her at bay, but Bambi Von Smasher has busted out of that pack, and she is our first lead Jammer of the day for the green and gold Team Australia. Marla take it to the outside, one last line of defense there by number one, King Cam, but she busts, oh, not quite getting through that pack. Kim Kang, 20 feet in front of the pack, has to yield, and she is through. Finally gets through on her scoring pass, but has a long way to go, as it's already Australia back in the thick of things, picking up points for Australia in this first jam. That was some classy play there by the Scottish defense. They held Bambi Von Smasher at bay. Knocked her out of bounds. She had to come back in behind Lily Lethal, who knocked her out. And we have uh, no, two points on the board for Team Australia. Three. Three unanswered points for Australia. That was the two on a stage unofficial score. <laughs> Do we hear four? Can we get lots of game? Bambi. We have Rose Ruin up on the jammer line in the green and gold for Team Australia. And for Scotland. We have Ciderella. No, not Ciderella. No. In fact, it is Marla Mayhem. No. It's Moxie Emerald. My apologies. There you go. I'm going to get a pay times cut. a charm, but it is Australia at first. She's the lead jammer. And Australia, two times in a row, control the jam. Moxie Emerald. Oh, nice block there by Trixie Belton. Knocks Moxie out of bounds, but she too and out of bounds, so Moxie did not have to yield. She takes to the inside, and she is through that pack with Lady Killer hot on her tail. Indeed. Rose Ruin in her first scoring pass. She busts out of that pack and puts another four points on the board and calls that jam. Very nice. You know, Rose Ruin was very effective. Australia having just a, a deep roster of talent on the jammer side. I, I think they surprised a lot of people in day one. Uh, really did exceedingly well. And now they're going to try to continue that streak and see how far up this ladder they can climb in actual elimination tournament play here at the World Cup. And I think you're going to see what you just said come into action here with Cookie Cutter, another key jammer for Team Australia, number 45 in the green and gold. That's Marshall Lawless for Team of, uh, Scotland. She had a great game today against Team New Zealand, one of their star players. But Cookie Cutter effortlessly gets through that pack and puts, gets a lead jammer. Oh, no, she does not get lead jammer. She cut the track. She got a cutting the track minor on the way through the pack, so she's not lead jammer. This is the chance for Team Scotland to get lead jammer to try and put some points on the board. Probably not going to put any points on the board, but at least stop Australia from putting any points on the board. But Lawless has yet to make her initial pass as it's going to be a natural grand slam for Australia. First grand slam Marshall in this Lawless elimination tournament. And Marshall Lawless calls off that jam. That's not something you often see late night, Lyle. Is someone getting a grand slam when they were not Lee Jammer? No, that indeed. It's, uh, you know, you don't, we, we've actually seen a lot of natural grand slams, though. Very, in the preliminary bouts, uh, a lot of very clean play, not a lot of 
uh, in, in many of the bouts. Not a lot of power jams being given up. Scotland dropping down to a mass proposal. Marla Mayhem stepping up to the jammer line. This is really Marla Mayhem this time for Team <laughs> Scotland in the blue up alongside shortstop in the green and gold in her first jam of the evening for Team Australia. That is a tight Scotland defence there. Shortstop trying to shove her way through. Marla Mayhem on the outside. Marla Mayhem is the lead jammer in a fantastic burst of speed as she's going to be in a power jam due to track cut by shortstop. This is what Team Scotland's looking for. The pack only crawling along, which is, of course, to Scotland's advantage. So Team Australia have walled up Marla Mayhem to avoid getting a back-blocking major. Had to put the brakes on. Now she has to find a way through that solid golden wall in front of her. Marla Mayhem looks to the middle, goes to the inside, comes around turn four, breaks through, and it's going to be a grand slam. Five points for Scotland as they crack their egg and get on the board. That's what Scotland need to get themselves, get their mojo back and get into this game. The pack just inching along. There's that solid wall. They're trying to cage her against the side of the track. Marla Mayhem up against the two wall of Scotland as another of Australia's blockers gets sent to the penalty box, but it's going to be a second grand slam for Marla Mayhem. Double digits for the girl in blue. There is only three points in this game. Now 10 points to Scotland, 13 points to Australia. This is going to be one absolute cracker of a game, Lyle. If you're just now watching, it is Scotland in the blue with white stripes, Australia in the green with gold. Australia, I believe, favored to win this, but Scotland's really put up a massive fight. Like, Scotland have been seeded number 13 of 13 in the tournament, but I d really don't believe they are the worst team. They were just unfortunate enough to draw USA in the draw, and they are a behemoth of a team. They are indeed. Scotland taking the lead in that power jam, 14 to 13, a one-point advantage for Scotland. But Australia looking to take, advantage, take that back in this one with Rose Ruin on the line. And Moxie Emerald in her second jam in the blue for Team Scotland. She falls backwards. Rose Ruin takes advantage of the few seconds that she has. She's ducking and weaving, trying to get past number seven, Minnie Wright, at the front of the pack, doing a great job of holding her back, but she busts through that pack. The lead jammer with Moxie Emerald hard behind her. Moxie Emerald had a wicked can opener put on her in turn two, and that allowed Rose Ruin to get the lead, but right you are. They are skating, skating. This will likely end in a double-zero jam. That's what it's looking like to me. You'll notice this tactic of Rose Ruin. She loves slowing down and toying with the other jammer. You'll see that the pack has now caught up to the two jammers while they are just defensively skating slowly around the pack, toying with one another. Looks like Rose wanted to call off the jam, thought otherwise, and decided to motor on ahead. Moxie Emerald trapped back behind the Australian line. This is looking good for Team Australia. This is a gorgeous move. We saw this in the WFTDA tournaments. It's a, it's a kind of, I would think it's an advanced move. The two, the <laughs> ruin held the other jammer back until the baby could be eaten, until the opposing jammer could be sucked back into the pack. Very effective this time, and it's led to a natural grand slam for Australia. Australia retakes the lead. It has paid off in Trump's this jam. Moxie Emerald got forced right to the back of the pack, but she's finally made it through, but still, that was only her initial pass. There's no points yet on the board for this jam for Scotland. Rose Ruin had an absolute cracker. That is 14 points to Scotland in the blue, 22 points to Australia in the green and gold, 22 minutes, 42 seconds left in the first half. There's a nine-point gain for an eight-point difference in the total score, 22 to 14 on the line now. There's Bambi Von Smasher skating for Australia in the green and gold. And it looks like Marshall Lawless for Scotland. They are starting in a no-pack formation. It's Team Australia obviously eager to get that jam started as quickly as possible and try and increase the, that lead that they have. Marshall oh. Lawless takes it to the inside and gets lead jammer. Fantastic move. I actually thought Bambi was going to take it on the outside. And all of a sudden, Marshall with a hop. Through turn one, grabs it. Bambi is on her scoring run, but Lawless with a big advantage on the track. Australia trying to get that pack moving quickly to make life difficult for Lawless, but she tucks and weaves. Comes a foul of Scott number 911, Scully, who's knocked out of bounds, and that jam is called. You'll notice the um, Australian tactic there of having a three wall with the fourth blocker skating backwards. 
watching for the approaching jammer, trying to break their mojo and alerting the wall to the approach, whether they're coming on the inside or the outside. We should see a fair bit more of that in today's game. We'll take a, keep a look out for it. At the end of that jam, uh, Scottish blocker Fight Cub went to the penalty box, so Scotland will be starting half a pack down, but it will be Moxie Emerald jamming. But with with Cookie Cutter, number 45, jamming for Team Australia in the green and gold, who has busted out of that pack and got the lead jammer status. Moxie taken to the inside, trying to find a way. Out, blocked out of bounds by King Cam. Has to come in behind the pack. Rose Ruin clears her out of the way. Cookie Cutter takes to the outside. Puts five points on the board. That is a grand slam for Team Australia. 13-point lead so far as Australia goes to 27. And doesn't look like she's going to be done yet as she goes for her second pass. Easily cruises through and picks up another natural grand slam. That's what they bring Cookie Cutter along for. And by the looks of that defense there, Moxie Emerald is going to struggle to get through by the time Cookie Cutter makes it back around for another lap. And here she comes. There's one point on the board as she overtakes Lily Lethal. Bust on the outside. And there is another five points. Cookie Cutter, this is a 15-point jam, I believe. It is indeed. She's not going to stop just yet. She still has a whole minute. As long as these are natural Grand Slam, she has no reason to call it off as she goes to the pack for, for her 20 points. And Moxie Emerald still right at the back of the pack, still has four more green and gold blockers to get through before she can start scoring some points. And Cookie Cutter is making the most of that defense of her blockers. Yet another five points on the board. There's 20. Let's see if she's able to do 25. And this will be a record-setting jam right out of the gate for the World Cup in elimination play. I think you might be right there, late night, Lyle. There's another five points. That is a 25-point jam to Cookie Cutter and Team Australia. What an absolute cracker of, a, of team play right there. Although we can put all the glory onto Cookie Cutter, a lot of that work was done by her blockers holding Moxie Emerald at bay, not allowing her to complete that pass. Absolutely. Lady Killer doing a great job just trapping Emerald back. But the... the the elusive unicorn for Cookie Cutter as Australia extends their lead significantly. Scotland going to have to change some things up to make sure that doesn't keep happening. Absolutely. Stepping up to the jammer line, we have Marshall Lawless once again jamming for Team Scotland in the blue up alongside Lady Killer in her first jam of the evening, number 11 in the green and gold for Team Australia. When I was just talking about doing some fantastic blocking in the back is now on the jammer line. Yep, there's nothing that girl can't do. Only freshly back from injury too, Lady Killer is. But she, injured or not, she has nothing but derby on her mind. She has been focusing on this World Cup since the minute she got chosen for the team. Australia with a mass proposal set up as they take a knee, trying to get their jammer out quickly. Again, consistently, the pack lines up all the way back to the jammer line. We've seen this almost every time here at the World Cup. Those packs are so tight. Marshall Lawless is trying to force her way through. Blocked out of bounds. Whistles are being blown. Don't see anybody going, being sent off the track. No, it's one of Australia's blockers. And that, some spills in the front straightaway. That is what we are talking about. Marshall Lawless does not get Lee Jammer. She did not pass through the pack clean. Lady Killer busts out, gets Lee Jammer, and calls off that jam defensively. Not seeing any advantage in continuing it. Danger Mouth goes to the penalty box. Both teams down one blocker. Up on the jammer line, we have Marla Mayhem in the blue for Team Scotland. Up alongside shortstop number six in the green and gold for Team Australia. A timeout has been called by Team Australia. Last time shortstop was on the line, she gave up a power jam and allowed Scotland to take the lead. She's not going to want to make the same mistake this time. No, I'm right with you there, Lyle. She has to focus this game to make sure she doesn't repeat that, that effort. Indeed. A 29-point difference in the score, and we've already seen in the preliminaries a 35 and a 30-point single jam. Uh, in fact, Scotland was the owner of that 30-point single jam. We talked about that earlier. Um, Team USA was the owner of the 35-point the jam at, uh, at a matrix. Speaking of records, that 35-point power jam, that's got to be high up amongst them. We don't often see a score like that in one jam. No. But I think the point of it all is that don't think 
that Australia can rest on their laurels right now. It only takes one unfortunate jam for that score difference to decrease by 30 points. They've got to stay focused. They have to stay strong. Well, we still have 18 minutes to play in, in period one. With the score, Scotland 18, Australia 47. And of course, shortstop back on the jammer line for Team Australia in the green and gold. Up alongside Marla Mayhem in the blue for Team Australia. Shortstop finds an easy opening on the outside of the track. And with, with even before the first turn, she has lead jammer. It, didn't, it looked like she didn't even know she was supposed to go. It was wide open. She was like waiting. It's like, am I crossing the line too soon? Like, now you can go. Surely it can't be this easy, can it? <laughs> it was. It looked like that. Like, really? Can I just take this? <laughs> and there we go. She busts through that pack, puts five points on the oh, four points on the board. She missed. She had a no pass, no penalty on the way through the pack. Did not legally pass one of the blockers through, so that's going to cost her a point. But it's still four points. That Scotland's not scoring. But Scotland's jammer is out of the pack. Both girls on the scoring run, but shortstop making up for that power jam she gave up last time as she posts another four points on the board, eight points total to bring Australia close to a 40 point difference in the score. I think we can safely say the shortstops redeemed herself after that classy jam with an eight, to, eight points to zero. We have number 12, Rose Ruin, stepping up to the jammer line in the green and gold for Team Australia, up alongside Fight Cub, number 182 in the blue for Team Scotland. We have two Scottish blockers in the sin bin and one Australian blocker. That means this is a 3-2 pack advantage to Team Australia. Fight Club trying to fight her way through, but it's going to be Team Australia through the pack. Australia again with control of the jam. That's what we're talking about. You'll notice Rose Ruin, number 12, and number 45, Cookie Cutter, are both sisters. Obviously, jamming is in their blood. That is something I did not know. Dave, it's uh, as she as Rose Rowan dives down in the front straight away on the outside, picks up a grand slam and extends the lead of Australia. This is of course a power jam because somewhere along the line the team team Scotland jammer is now sitting in the sin bin. There's nothing Rose Rowan likes more than being at the helm of a power jam. She's ducking and weaving, trying to find a gap there. Some nice defense there by Minnie Wright at the front of the pack. But Rose Rowan steps through and puts five points on the board for Australia. Double digit so far for Rose Ruin as she goes to make it 15 in Australia, showing why they were favored to win this. Scully and Ruby at the back of the pack, keeping that pack moving nice and slow, just how Rose likes it. But there is that nice solid blue wall at the front of the pack that Rose has to find her way through. R Ruby Ribcrusher steps up to try and break open some holes for her to get through. Rose Ruin takes advantage. Oh, there's a brutal block there by number 55, Danger Mouth. Knocking Rose Ruin out of bounds. She is struggling to get through that pack. There's no easy points here, Lyle. No, not at all. And, and this, is, this is turning out to be a, a much more physical fight as one of Scotland, Danger Mouth, goes to the penalty box. Only girl in the penalty box for either side right now as the power jam has ended. Both jammers on the track. Fight Club in her initial pass, trying to find her way through to the pack. In fact, both of them, Rose Ruin finds a way on the outside, and that's five points on the board. That's a grand slam for I, Rose Ruin. I tell you, Dave, I, I think I've lost count. I think, I think that was 20. Yeah, you might have it right there, Lyle. I must confess, I've got no idea. <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed by what I'm seeing here. I can't be keeping track of the points in the back of my head. Marshall Lawless on the line for Scotland. But thanks for showing me up there. Up against number 45 in the green and gold. That's Cookie Cutter for Team Australia. Rose Scotland in the blue. Starting in a no-pack formation. That's amazing. Cookie Cutter on the inside. A quick hop just destroys the, the pack and his lead jammer. And Australia has, has found their key to controlling the jam almost every time. She had got through that pack before the pack had even passed a pivot line there. Derby fans, she is an absolute jamming superstar. Look at that, five more points on the board. And she's in a power jam as Marshall Lawless has gone to the penalty box. Another power jam given up by Scotland, and this is just getting brutal. If Scotland gets sloppy, keeps the girls in the penalty box, it'll be an easy game for Australia. 
Absolutely. This was a big problem Scotland had in the New Zealand game earlier today. They were in and out of that bin constantly the whole game. And I really believe that made the difference between the win or loss in that game. And it may do so again here. They must keep their jammers, especially out of that sin bin. I agree. The difference is that New Zealand made a lot of mistakes as well. And, and Scotland was able to capitalize when New Zealand was making mistakes. Australia, on the other hand, all day in game in the preliminaries and today, they're not making those mistakes for Scotland to even things up on. And so it's just allowing Australia to walk away with it. And the score's reflecting that, Lyle. And there's the familiar sight of the ref holding his open palm to the ceiling for another five points for Cookie Cutter. And before I'd even completed that sentence, she's put another five points. Unbelievable. Where Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on DNN, keep track of the score yourself because we've lost track a long time ago. I lost count before they even breached single digits. I got to confess. There's another grand slam. Five more points. Cookie's looking to her bench manager to see if she could call it, and they're waving her on. You just keep skating, Cookie. Keep putting those points on the board. Well, and, and it's, it's extremely easy when Scotland only has one blocker on the track. They've got two blockers in the penalty box. You can only have two blockers in the penalty box at any given time from one side. Another blocker skating around the outside, waiting for her turn. And Scotland really has to tighten things up and gear down and stop hemorrhaging penalties right now or else it's, it's just, <laughs> we've still got 11 minutes in the first period. Draw your own conclusion from there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, time, a timeout called by Scotland pretty shortly. They need to regather their wits and slow the game down and start concentrating on staying on board the track. Shortstop has busted out of that pack, got lead jammer status. Number six in the green and gold. With 19 minutes into the first period, Scotland's got 18 points. Australia at a cool 100 as another Grand Slam gets posted by shortstop making it 105 and another one of Scotland's blockers goes to the penalty box. And life is so, it's just, as you're saying, it's too easy for shortstop out there. There's only two blockers that can do anything. And one blocker now, one and blocker. yet another one is heading towards the bin. And shortstop doesn't even have to make any effort to score five points after five points after five points. It's just crazy. This has been two jams in a row that for some time, Scotland has only had one blocker. Another power jam in play for Australia. And Scotland just handing Australia the first game of this elimination battle. It, it certainly seems that way, Lyle. I think Knuckles, the Scotland bench manager, really has to call a timeout and just start to slow and have a stern discussion with these girls because, as you say, it's, they're just handing them the game. This is way too easy. This really is hemorrhaging at this point. It, it's, um, you know, if you're the coach of Scotland, what do you do to stop this? Yeah, no, you got me there. You've got, you've got to gather them around. You have to show them some focus and just slow slow it down. Because it's too far away from halftime. You know, if we were a couple of minutes away from halftime, you'd say, okay, if we can just get to the, you know, get to the back, do one of those wonderful speeches or, you know, yell at them or something to, to get their mindset back into it. But we're, we got 10 minutes left. This is going to get brutal. And, and there's that there's that timeout we're expecting, Lyle. Let's see if we can hear that yelling that you predicted. You know, Australia just posted a 30-point jam in there. I, that's that's almost double Scotland's entire score. You're absolutely right. We have nine minutes and 53 seconds left in the game, Derby fans. 18 points on the board for Scotland, 130 points for Australia. I don't think anyone expected this. No, no, I certainly didn't. Um, I, I, I kind of thought Australia, well, not kind of, I thought Australia had the advantage going in. Um, but Scotland just looked so good, especially even though they only scored one point against Team USA. Nobody's done anything against Team USA, you know. Um, New Zealand played them first, and they, they scored eight points, you know. Uh, but I, I, I'm just, you, you got to think they're getting frustrated. They're, they're, they're losing their cool, and something has to reset their mind. You know, it, it appears to be a, a psychological thing at this point, Dave. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. As you say, that one point that they got against Team USA, that could have been anyone. That could have been half a dozen teams here. It was just whoever was unlucky enough to get that titan of a team in the preliminary rounds. But they play a good game when they have their skaters on the pitch. While they're sitting in the sin bin, they can't, there's nothing they can, there's nothing that the Scotland can do. While they have a full suite of blokes out there, they play a good solid game. Indeed. Marla Mayhem stepping up to the jammer line in the blue for Team Scotland up alongside number 411 Bambi Von Smasher in the green and gold for Australia. The pack starting right up hard against the jammer line as we've been seeing all weekend. And I think we're about to see that golden wall tighten up and start forcing Marla Mayhem to have to shove her way through. It's been a skillful, it's been a good tactic that Australia have used all weekend and I can't see them changing it anytime soon. It's been working in this game as well. Well, you know, even though Australia has a massive lead at this point, still plenty of derby to play and stranger things have happened in roller derby. I, I have seen a 98 point deficit overcome before one time. The team still lost, but it happened. I'll certainly be sticking around to watch the end of the game anyway. Yes. As we can see, Bambi Von Smash has busted out of that pack, but she did not get lead jammer. She had to pass through the pack clean, which she did not do. This is a chance for Scotland to at least get a zero-point jam, which at this point is a, is a victory. No, she's deciding not to call up the jam. Bambi Von Smash has got through the jam and put four points on the, ta on the board. I've got to wonder about the wisdom of that manoeuvre. Maybe she doesn't realise that she has Lee Jammer status? Or possibly it's just about playing and for the fans. I know, you know, when New Zealand scored that eight points against Team USA, their first four points, they'd already given up 16 in that same jam. And so, it, you know, it, sometimes it just comes down to let's just score some points. OK, I hear you. Maybe just to help their team get a bit of mojo back, show that, yes, we can score points. We have scored points. We can score points. They just need to keep remembering that. We have stepping up to the crease for Team Australia in the green and gold. Number one, two, Rose Ruin. And for Australia. I believe that's Moxie Emerald on the jammer line, though that is the Honest Dave unofficial jammer. As I'm, sure you, as I'm sure you've noticed, my unofficial jammer is not always correct, but it is. Number 23, Moxie <laughs> Emerald. But it is Team Australia once again with control of the jam as Rose Ruin is the lead jammer. You were talking about Scotland knowing how to score. They also know how to go to the penalty box as shown in this bout as number 99, Mistress, went to the penalty box in the last jam. You can see Rose Ruin playing this game again, toying with Moxie Emerald, holding her back, defense, and letting the pack catch back up. There's Maserati, has overtaken her, blocked her out of bounds. That is some beautiful derby right there. I love to see Rose Ruin in action. They've trapped her back within the pack again. She's almost been recycled right to the back, still to get through her initial pass. Rose Ruin are soon to overtake her, maybe, if she can get past those two blockers at the back. Australia playing like they want to win this whole thing and really playing well. We saw this in day one. We're seeing it now. This is going to be exciting. Australia may upset Canada and get into the top seed to play in the championship bout. <laughs> Wouldn't that be an amazing side? That's what's been best about this World Cup. We haven't had any idea what to expect from any of these teams. We didn't know. Team Finland, Team New Zealand, Team Journey, we didn't know how they were going to fare. No. And it's been fantastic to see how they have gone at each other on the out here on the flat track. It has been a wonderful weekend, and there is so much more Derby to see. Make sure you log on derbynewsnetwork.com. This is where all the action is for the next three days. Don't forget, you can buy any of the DVDs on rollerderbyworldcup.com at any point in time. The crowd here, the sold out crowd has been ecstatic. It doesn't matter what kind of game it is, whether it's close or a blowout, this crowd loves it. One thing I especially love about a game of derby is that we're here on the edges of Toronto in some suburb, I don't even know where we are. But here we have in a concrete bunker, somewhere in the edges of this, this city, the best derby skaters in the world have all descended on here. It's just such a vibe. You, all walk, people are walking past their derby superstars. There's parties in the hotel lobby. It's just been, it's just turning out to be a amazing weekend. It is a, an incredible experience and you're sharing derby history with us live on DNN Shortstop.
on the line for Australia. Up alongside Marshall Lawless in the blue for Team Scotland. We don't have any team starting on their knees right now. So we can possibly expect to see a bit of slow derby here. The fans are going to love that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that was a no-pack start. That goes to show what I know. Marshall Lawless has busted through the inside of the pack. She is lead jammer for Scotland. Let's see what she can do with this. Shortstop clears the pack. Now is the chance for Marshall Lawless to try and get some points on the board for her team. Marshall Lawless breaking through in the first time in many jams. Scotland has control of the jam, and hopefully it'll be a, a turn of momentum for the girls in blue. She puts four points on the board and calls off that jam. That is what Team Scotland need. They can do it. They just need to prove that to themselves, I believe. 25 points to Scotland, 145 points to Australia. Four minutes and eight seconds left in the first half. If they can just do that about 30 more times in a row, they'll be right back into this. Let's not start getting sarcastic now. And, of course, when Scotland are in trouble, what do they do? But they field number 360, Wild Oats, the famous Scotland jammer who scored the only point against Team USA earlier today. And she is not, in fact, even supposed to be a jammer. She's a blocker. But when they don't know what else to do, they put Wild Oats out on the track and see what she can sow. Up alongside her, we have in the green and gold, number 45, Cookie Cutter for Team Australia. Well, let's see if she scores a point or two here in this jam, but Cookie Cutter has been a dominant force for Team Australia this entire time, but certainly in this bout as she's made quick work of the back every single time. Let's not forget her 30-point jam earlier tonight, but Wild Oats has taken to the inside, and that is what we're talking about. <laughs> Wild Oats is the lead jammer out racing Cookie Cutter and Wild Fight Cub puts Cookie Cutter to the outside of the front straight away. Eats her back up into the pack and Wild Oats has an opportunity in open waters to pick up a natural grand slam. What an absolute superstar this girl is. She tries through the inside. Blocked out of bounds by Von Smash. Has to re-enter in behind her. Can she find a way through? You Suze, you lose sla and slaughtered on her at the front of the pack. She could not find her way through. And she puts maybe two, three points on the board and calls that jam. Indeed, but with, with as great as that was for Wild Oats, Scotland also sent two of their blockers to the penalty box. Mini Riot and Fight Cub. Both sitting down, so Scotland going to start this one off with a half pack and many Marla Mayhem going to have to go up against a full pack of Australia. Absolutely right. Rose Ruin, number one, two in the green and gold. She's going to have a pretty easy job of this, I believe, with her four blockers supporting her. Then again, Lily Lethal holds oh, her at bay. Marla Mayhem on the outside breaks through with half a pack helping her. She is the lead jammer. Rose Ruin following closely and tightly behind, but it is a burst of momentum for Scotland. I'm very happy to be proven wrong right there by Marla Mayhem. That was some classy work, but she could see there was nothing further to be gained as Rose Ruin overtook her, so she calls off the jam. That is a zero-point jam. We have 32 points to Scotland in the blue, 145 points to Australia in the green and gold. Only one minute and 30 seconds left in the first half. This could possibly be the final jam of the first half. Honest Dave Scotland still got plenty of fight left in them as they have shown it right here right now. Oh, he was so... Yes, you're right. I, I just lost hope just for that brief moment. Thank you, Marla, for putting me back right. They know how to play a game of derby. They've shown us this weekend. Marshall Lawless Jamming for Team Scotland, Lady Killer jamming for Team Australia. What's it going to be in the final jams of the first half, ladies and gentlemen? That's a tough looking pack. Look at that golden wall. Marshall just going alone, trying to bash her way through that pack. Ruby Ribcrusher at the front. She makes it. She is lead jammer. She did another jam for Team Scotland as they have control of the jam. Lawless is the lead jammer, but has to call it off with a quickness as she was followed closely by the Australian girl with the star on her head. I believe they've got Lee Jammer the last three jams, I believe. Four by my count, but oh. I'm not sure. 
I think I'll trust you, Lyle. <laughs> All right. Number one, three, Marlon Mayhem, stepping up to the jammer line for Team Scotland, up alongside number six, shortstop for Team Australia. This will very, this will definitely be the last jam of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. If we actually make it into this jam, only 10 seconds left. Whistle blows, so we will have the jam. Math proposal set. Green and gold for Australia, blue for Scotland, and it's Scotland again! Scotland again for a fifth time is the lead jammer. Another big jam for Marla Mayhem as a Scotland has grabbed hold of the momentum and just ran with it. They have a huge mountain to climb, but they are doing everything they can. They're strapping on their gear, and they're going to climb this mountain if they can. I'm hearing you loud and clear there, Lyle. This is beautiful. Look at that. Marla Mayhem bust out of that pack. She puts four points on the board, I can only assume. I, I think they tried to call a timeout. I don't think you can do that. That's the, to, the, peri the period time it ended, you can't call oh, a timeout. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I think they were trying it on, though. Yeah, they may have been trying, but... Very time and morning, it is halftime. Scotland 36, Australia 145, but it's been all Scotland the past five jams, despite the huge score difference. It was a massive, huge amount of penalties that caused this big score difference as Scotland just, just poured as many people as they could into the penalty box for the majority of the middle of the first half. But they've gotten it back together. The question is, will it be enough to get back into this and make this a competitive bout, Dave. Well, we will find that out late night, Lyle, in nine minutes' time after the halftime. We'll see you then. I am on track one. You're going to have number eight, Germany, versus number nine. Along with the crowd and a roar when they heard that they came in as a second seed. I'm going to go with the also shrieked. Yeah, I think there was a few shrieks for sure. All right, well, that's going to be it for myself. I'm Val Capone, and I'm joined by my friend Derby Nerd. Thank you so much. Don't forget, of course, to always say thank you by making a contribution to Derby News Network. Keep Derby News Network on your web streams, coming at you live on any way possible.
check, yo. Check, check, mic check. Check, mic check. You would not believe the mess of chords running around this space right now. Check, check. Oh my goodness, I believe we can hear ourselves. All right, out there in the stream chat, let me know. Uh, too loud, too soft, too uh, uh, cutting out any problems. Uh, stream chat, let me know. We're back, and I, I tell you, Honest Dave here, along with myself, Late Night Lyle, and it's the score, Australia 145. And it, even though it's a massive difference in score, over 100 points, 
it doesn't tell the tale. If you're just now tuning in to DNN, Scotland in the past five jams has really changed things around, brought things back together, and had a fantastic run in the past five jams. That's right, Late Night Lyle. It was only for that brief 15 minute period in the middle of that first half where they were just bleeding penalties and they just had constant stream of blockers and jammers in and out of that sin bin that, that, that Team Australia was able to capitalise on that and just crank their score right up. But as long as they keep their players out of the bin, as you say, the last five jams they've got lead jammer, they can play this game. It's just, it has been an exciting game. It's, yeah, As you say, we can't tell you can't tell what's just happened in this game by looking at the score. Not at all. Um, I was... Uh, uh, we, we, we've seen so much excitement through the preliminaries. Of course, this is the first game of the actual elimination bout. In uh, On track two, the second game is going on right now. Argentina versus Sweden. Sweden's beating Argentina 42-5. to five. But right now, we're about to start the second half of Australia versus Scotland. Now, it was been asked the difference between a natural Grand Slam and a regular Grand Slam. Oftentimes, when you have a Grand Slam, it's when a power jam is in place, when one team has a jammer in the penalty box, and the Grand Slam is, is scored much easier. Natural Grand Slam is where one team, or both jammers are on the track, but one jammer's held back by the pack, and the other jammer is just lapping her. Much harder to do, much more impressive. And and we've been seeing a lot of that here by the by the more experienced teams. That's right, Lyle. We saw that 30 points the cookie cutter score scored. That was a uh, done through natural grand slams. The other jammer was out on the pitch that entire time, and she was able to just continue to lap her while. The block has held her at bay. We have Rose Ruin jamming number 12 for Team Australia in the green and gold. Has just busted out of that pack and got Lee Jammer. We still have our Scottish blocker, Marshall Lawless, I believe, struggling to find her way through that green and gold wall. We have Scully King, uh, Scully King Cam XL and Slaughter Daughter jamming for Team Australia. And Marshall Lawless has busted her way through that pack. Finally making it past uh, Swanadonna, but... Ruin calling off the jam, and Rose Ruin in the first half. Rose Ruin and her sister, Cookie Cutter, has had a huge, been just massively responsible for that 149-point score posted on the side of Team Australia. Let's not forget about the awesome defense that their uh, blockers have been providing as well. That's been a large part of that score as well. 360 in the blue. Wild Oats up again on the jammer line for the second time this game. Up alongside in the green and gold, number six shortstop for Team Australia. You know, Wild Oats was is a blocker. We, we mentioned it before several times, but they put her out, and it was Wild Oats that started that big momentum shift at the end of the last one, but it's shortstop now, first out through the pack. A no pass, no penalty. Keeps her from being lead jammer. She did not pass one of the blockers legally. That allows Wild Oats to break through. Gets the lead and call off the jam before Oates can add any more to the score of Australia. Let me tell you, late night, Lyle, at the after party when I'm getting drunk and shouting Derby Girls drinks, Wild Oates is going to be top of that list. She has been a, an absolute star today. She's been a ple an absolute pleasure to watch. That was just totally out of the blue. They were not planning on fielding her in today's game against USA. They put her out there out of desperation, and she put that one and only point on the board. Indeed. She is a Scottish hero. Bambi Bound smash him, and Marla Mayhem on the line. Marla Mayhem for, in the blue for Scotland. Barbie for Australia, and it's smash him out first. She's the lead jammer. Australia again in control of the jam. That was a nice looking pop up in the jam there. Oh, jeez, that is a massive. She slides off into the outfield. A beautiful sight. Bambi Bond Smasher takes to the outside, puts some points on the board for the green and gold. Marla Mayhem oh, takes it inside and she is through that pack. There's a that's a grand slam for Bambi Von Smasher, five points. Indeed, grand slam being scored. Uh, and looks to do it again as Marla Mayhem out of the pack now. Smash him, wanting to pick up at least another nine. Slaughter Daughter and you, Suze, you lose the only two Australian blockers on the track. Look at that sea of blue in Smasham's path. Ma Mayhem able to take advantage of the pack advantage and puts four points on the board for Scotland. That's what we're talking about. You've got to stay out of the bin. Smasher really struggling.
Uh, a big hello to everyone around the world, certainly in Scotland, in Australia, in certain parts we won't mention here on the broadcast live on DNN, but hello to everyone watching and a thank you for tuning in to DNN. Late Night Lyle and Honest Day bringing you the action. I'm sure there's plenty of parties right across Australia right now and right across Scotland. And so there should be. These girls are just having a great day. It has been a sterling game of solid focus to Herbie. I'm so happy to be here. And Australia has a lot of reasons to party as they've been stellar throughout this tournament. We have 40 points on the board for Scotland, 158 points on the board for Australia, 26 minutes and 16 seconds left in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Timeout has been called. Very close nail-biter of a game. It's that sarcasm again, Lyle. It's very <laughs> unbecoming. I, I've been around too many British, Australian, New Zealand broadcasters. It's that dry wit that I love so much. Oh, yeah, sure. Put it on me. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> 182 Fight Cub stepping up to the Jammer line in the blue for Team Scotland with Rose Ruin, number 1-2 in the green and gold for Australia. Rose Ruin looking to ruin the day of many of the top-seeded teams. The top three, of course, Team USA, number two seed, Team Canada, and the third seed, Team England. They won't play till tomorrow, and they all got to buy into round two. These two teams we're seeing here are the number four seed, which is Team Australia playing against the bottom seed, seed 13, Team Scotland. So, of course, if after preliminary rounds that, that uh, put all the different teams into a seed from number one to 13, and then once the elimination rounds start, the higher seeded teams play against the lower seeded teams in the elimination. The winner moves forward. The loser will play against the loser of the next game. All right, we'll see an explanation here on the, on the last part. Which is uh, uh, the, the, the one going on right now, Argentina versus Sweden. So these two, these two teams will face off against each other to, to decide final ranking here in the World Cup. Refs still busy discussing a point of law out there in the middle of the track. It is. The girls obviously eager to get back into the, into the swing of things. So the winner of this game will be playing the winner of Argentina versus Sweden. The loser of this game will be playing the loser of Argentina versus Sweden. Right now, this, the game Argentina-Sweden is going on. It's five points to Argentina, 57 points to Sweden and the first half is about half the way through. So that might give you an idea of what's going on and what these teams can expect to play over the next few hours and days. Rose Ruin taken to the front of the pack and once again playing her game, toying with the opposing jammer. Oh, and she's gonna be in a power jam as Fight Cub toying with her a little bit, got a little sloppy and did a track cut. And that's gonna leave a minute of power jam in the hands of Australia. I think Rose Ruin can be pretty happy with her efforts there. That was some nice work. She's taken to the outside now, has to work through that blue wall of blockers at the front there. Number 77, Crazy Legs doing a good job of holding her at bay. But she ducks, she weaves, she gets through the pack and puts five points on the board for Team Australia. Pack slows to a crawl as Rose Ruin goes to the outside at turn one, tries to make it past a three wall of Team Scotland and gets held up a little bit. Scully went to the front of the pack to try and find a hole for Rose Ruin to step through. But there was some good defense there at the front of the pack by Scotland. Rose wasn't going anywhere, so she pulled off the jam defensively. Moxie Emerald responsible for making sure that a lot more points weren't scored and that Australia's jammer didn't make it back to open waters. We've got Fight Cub still has to complete her minute in the sin bin, so shortstop is stepping up to the jammer line unopposed. This is a power jam for the green and gold for Team Australia. 40 points to Scotland, 166 to Australia, 24 points, 24 minutes, 32 seconds left in the game. Australia no. starting off again in a match proposal where their entire pack starts off with one knee on the ground to create a no pack situation and start the jam immediately so their jammer can go. It pays off in this case, but shortstop is not the lead jammer as a minor forearm prevents her from taking control of the jam. 
So this means Fight Club is now our lead jammer. No doubt she'll be calling this jam off pretty quickly. She is just moments before shortstop enters the back of the pack. The jam is called. That is a zero-point jam. A little surprising there, Honest Day, that she didn't call it immediately. The one thing that Scotland doesn't want to do is eat any time off the clock. They're going to need as much time as they possibly can to overcome a 126-point deficit. I hear you there, Lyle, and it is so easy to make those comments sitting over here from the safety of the commentary box. But maybe it's not so easy when the pressure is on, as no doubt it is on Fight Club and Team Scotland's head right now. We have jamming for Team Australia, Bambi Von Smasher, number 411 in the green and gold for Australia, up against number F104, Marshall Lawless in the blue for Team Scotland. Von Smasher, there we go, Scully doing what she does best, clearing a gap for for Bambi Von Smasher, who takes advantage of that and slips through the pack. Lead jammer, Team Australia. Smasher on the inside at turn three, making quick work of the pack. But it's Marshall Lawless still caught in the back of the pack, going through turns one and two, and the jam gets called. But not everybody realizes it as Australia sends out a new pack before the old pack even stops playing. Yeah, they're pretty keen to get back into the swing of things. They want to claim that position hard back against the jammer line. We saw in Australia's earlier games yesterday, they were almost having head-on collisions with the outcoming skate, the inbound skaters while they're so quickly trying to get out onto the pack, onto the track, because <laughs> they are so keen to claim that spot at the back of the jammer line. You can rhyme a few more words in there if you like and uh, <laughs> put a little beatboxing behind it. I can if you want me to. And We'll do a little show. It'd be nice. Um, Team Australia called a team timeout, and it's it doesn't appear from our vantage point that it's an official review. It's just a team timeout. Team Scotland not taking advantage of that. They seem pretty comfortable just to stand out there. They're not getting in with their coach and having a chat. They are just calmly waiting out on the track for Team Australia to rejoin them. We have number 13, Marla Mayhem, on the jammer line in the blue for Team Scotland alongside Trixie Beltham in her first jam of the game, number 106 in the green and gold for Team Australia. Let's see what Trixie can do with this jam. Team Australia starting, deploying their blockers in the no-pack formation to try and get the jam started quickly. And of course, in that scrum start, Mayhem has to force her way through Slaughter, Maserati and Rose Ruin. Trixie Beltham busts through that, that pack on turn two and she's our lead jammer. Trixie's got a lot of speed here. It's, it's amazing they don't field her more often, but she's a fantastic blocker as well. Marla Mayhem still has yet to break through the defense of Australia. And... That was some armed wow. bandit blocks Trixie Belton with a brutal shoulder block out of bounds. Maserati just comes up and then takes out Arm Bandit. It was a beautiful sight. Bandit down to the ground hard outside of turn two. Marsha Lawless with the Jammer Star on her helmet in the blue for Team Scotland. Up and along. Bandit going to the penalty box after that. So got shut down and sent out. That's got a sting. Bambi Von Smasher up on the jammer line. And, no, and no, sorry. My, I'm almost like shortstop uh, poodling for Australia, copping her fourth minor. Shortstop taking an intentional fourth minor. That the poodling call. Bambi Von Smasher is the lead jammer, but Scotland, until just now, only had one blocker on the track the entire time. Um, as, as three of them in the billy box, Mistress Malicious coming back on to add to the pack, but, but wow, it looks like Scotland starting to do what they were doing in the middle of the first half. And look at this pack, it's split into two parts. I can't tell, it is a spaghetti pack right now in single file, stretching almost half the way around the pack and moving at an absolutely blistering pace. Look what these jammers have to really fire both those cannons to try and catch up to the pack. Bambi Von Smasher jamming for Team Australia. This looks like a relay race rather than derby. They're all spread so thinly across the track, racing. But at this point, it's whatever works for Team Australia. There's another four points added to their score by Smasher. Marshall Lawless in the sin bin for a cutting the track major. 
This is a power jam for Team Australia. Von Smasher calls off the jam. And this is a power jam with shortstop at the helm. Getting harassed here in the commentary box by Bob Noxious. Shortstop at the helm of this power jam. We have one blocker from each. Oh no, we have one blocker from Team Australia in the sin bin, and of course Marshall Lawless, the jammer, spending a minute in the sin bin. That's going to allow shortstop in his power jam again as Australia needing no help here, crushing Scotland in this first opening bout of the elimination tournament at the 2011 Blood and Thunder World Cup here in Toronto, Canada. Some nice ducking and weaving there by shortstop as she gets the lead jammer. Pack moving at quite a pace. Team Australia trying to slow the pack down by trapping Whiskey Galore at the back of the pack. Now Minnie Wright is there at the back. And they've got that pack moving nice and slow, which is just how shortstop wants it. Oh, wow. Shortstop taking a block and then balancing with a circus move to stay on her feet and shove the other blocker down. Minnie Riot going to the ground, trying to take shortstop out and failing. Shortstop, very nice feet in that move in turn three. It's as though she's done that before. Late night, Lyle. We have number 11, Lady Killer, standing at the jammer line and still waiting for our Scottish jammer, Marshall Lawless, to return from the sin bin. Let's see what Lady Killer can do with this one. Wallace just going to spend a few jams in the felony box. Why not? It's relaxing. And the both blockers are both teams of blockers are away. Lady Killer finding a solid wall of blue there for her to find her way through. She gouges her way through the middle of that pack. And she is our lead jammer. Nice hop in the back straight away. There's another armed bandit again in the penalty box for Scotland. Marshall Lawless has returned to the pack, coming a foul of Slaughter Daughter and Rose Ruin there as they are pinning her back. Lady Killer has stepped past, just has one last blocker. That would be Crazy Legs. Nice shoulder block there, holding her back, but she's going to come a foul of the 20 foot rule shortly. Lady Killer is through that pack with quick, five points on the board for Team Australia. Quick spin on the outside in the front straightaway to get another grand slam. Australia, it, it's really going to be interesting to see what happens when Australia goes up against those higher seeds. I mean, people say it almost jokingly. You know, hey, Australia could beat Canada. Australia could beat Canada. Seriously, Australia is playing very well. And for anybody to rule out Australia right now, I think they'd be foolish. No, you're not wrong there, Lyle. They, they haven't come all this way for no reason. They want to. There's no question. They want to win this tournament. I, I don't know if they can win it, but you're right. They might have a dash against Canada. Who knows? Canada are an amazing team. We just watched them in their last game a few hours ago, and they pretty much cleaned, cleaned the plate. They did. Canada played extremely well, and uh, regardless, we're going to see a lot of. Just really tight, really close, fantastic derby. The more this gets closer to the championship bout, more points to the score of Australia as they edge up on a 200-point mark. Scotland still sits at 40. We're just under the 17-minute mark here in Toronto. Honest Dave, along beside myself, Late Night Lyle live on DNN. Scotland in the blue, Australia in the green and gold, and we have a timeout called by Team Scotland. As exciting as this tournament has been already, Lyle, we have not seen nothing yet. We've only seen the preliminary rounds. This is the very first elimination round after the entrance ceremony. So we've still got the exciting parts of the tournament yet to come. It is. Game two is going on right now on track two, Argentina versus Sweden. And Argentina just picked up some points but still trails significantly. Argentina with 21, Sweden with 71. And over on this side of the track, we have Scotland on 40, Australia on 194. So far be it for me to predict the future, and I know I'm going to regret saying this, but we may see, by the looks of these scores, Australia facing up against Sweden next, with Scotland facing up against Argentina. Those are going to be two very exciting games, but Australia, I, I, I think the prediction would be Australia would be able to take out Sweden. You know what? I'm not even going to call that. Uh, you know, that's 
Just just because of what's going on in the other track doesn't mean anything. Uh, but I, I've just been extremely impressed, as as I think everybody has, with the way Australia has played this entire weekend. Yeah, it's been the teams, as I said earlier, they haven't known what to expect to one another, but even within the teams, like a lot of these skaters have not skated together, so it's a challenge for them to move as a unit. They don't know if they can rely on the skaters to the left and to the right of them to try and do their jobs correctly. It's, it's been a big step for these skaters to be able to trust the other girls in their team, and that's Bambi Von Smasher. She hacks her way through the pack, and she is our lead jammer for Team Australia. And she, the jam ends, and what? Oh, what's going on there? I'm not sure what's going on there. It looked like Bambi Von Smasham called off the jam. I didn't hear the whistles blow. Bambi Von Smasham lines up for the next jam, as did the rest of Team Australia. But their, their jammer, Scotland's jammer, gets out of the billy box and just starts skating a lap. And I, I can't argue with it. I didn't see that that jam ended at all. I, I didn't either. I didn't hear it, but... Um, it looks like the refs are saying yes. It it was, but we we're gonna, I think we're going to see an official timeout on this one. Yes, yes, we are. We can see Mark Madden from Team Australia up alongside Knuckles from Team Scotland. They're going to try and work things out with the head ref there. See if they can figure out what just happened then, because I'm speaking for myself. I've sure got no idea. Well, and, and it 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 is. It may seem like it doesn't matter, but it does because if the jam was called off. That means that Scotland's jammer is still in the billy box and Scotland can't field a new jammer. If, the, if it didn't get called off till later, well, then Scotland can field a new jammer. Now that, that power jam ended just as soon as that was called off, if it was called off, so it's just a matter of whether or not Scotland gets a fresh jammer out. No, you spot on there, Lyle, and no doubt that is what they are having the discussion there with. They've come away, I don't know if they've come away happy or not. Knuckles is looking a bit exasperated. Mark Madden's hard to read. Actually, hold on. I think we might have an official here just letting us know what happened then. He's just talking to Late Night Lyle and he's going to let the people out there know what's going on. This is all brought to you, of course, by DNN, www.derby news network. Where Just a clarification there is they're going to make sure the whistles are blown louder and that calls are made more clearly. It is Australia again with control of the jam as ba Barbie Van Von Smasham, Bambi Von Smasham, is the lead jammer. Uh, Team Scotland also out of the pack. Both girls on their scoring run, but Smasham already back in the thick of things and picking up points as another one of Scotland's blockers goes to the penalty box. Making it two again, again half a pack for Scotland, and that's if there's one area Scotland really has to work on, it's going to be penalties. You're absolutely right, Lyle. Bambi effortlessly slipped on the inside of the pack there, and that was simply because there were no blockers there to defend against her. Scotland really are making life too easy for Australia in this game. Number one, three, Marla Mayhem stepping up to the jammer line in the blue for Scotland up alongside shortstop, number six in the green and gold for Australia. Mark, look at that, Slaughter Daughter turning backwards. Oh, I love to see that work and just going shoulder to shoulder trying to shove her backwards. It is a tough, brutal pack there. Shortstop is the lead jammer. Australia two points away from the 200 mark and as I mention it, shortstop with one, two, and there's the other two as she picks up four. Crazy legs attempting to dish out a big block. We've seen some good defense from her. Just not quite timing it correctly. Shortstop, shortstop dodging to the left. But it would have been nice had it connected. Australia having some fun with this as they sit comfortably with a 162-point lead over Scotland. And still a lot of time left on the clock, but man, what a mountain to climb. There is plenty of derby left in this game late night, Lyle. We have Wild Oats jamming in her third jam, I believe, of the night. Number 60 for Team Scotland in the blue, alongside Lady Killer in the green and gold, who finds a gap on the inside, capitalizes in it, and busts out of that pack for lead jammer. Wild Oats has to get through King Cam there at the front of the pack, which she does quite handily. Oops, looks like she just copped the cutting the track penalty. Cut the track in front of King Cam. She is in the bin. This is a lead jammer for Lady Killer. 
once again we have our Scottish jammer sitting in the sin bin. Lady Killer loving this. Her coach Mark Madden is just saying, you just keep moving, you keep skating, you keep putting more points up on that board. Not because you have to, but just because it's fun. Absolutely. I mean, we and we've seen this. Most of the preliminary bouts, not all of them, but most of them were blowouts. And we didn't see any anyone let up. Of course, part of that was because the the score differential is what led to the seeding here. It wasn't just decided by wins, but by how much you won by. So obviously there was an advantage to not let up. But we're we're seeing that carry on here as there's no forgiveness. No, no mercy by Australia as they keep running up the score up against Scotland. But I'm sure both coaches are realizing that they haven't just got a game to win, but they've got an entire tournament to win. You can't wear your, your skaters out. If you've got the advantage now, maybe it might be worthwhile laying off a little bit, playing it a bit calmer, remembering that you've still got another two and a half days of derby ahead of you, and the teams are only going to get tougher. Indeed. It's, wow. We do still have two and a half more days of... of Derby ahead, don't we? I'm going to be getting a truckload of strepsils in, let me tell you. <laughs> Wild Oats stepping up to the jammer line once again, back out of the bin for Team Scotland up alongside Bambi Von Smashen, who I'm thinking should actually change her name to Barbie Von Smashen because that's not the first time she's been called that this weekend. <laughs> but it definitely is Bambi Von Smashen up against Wild Oats. Let's see what they can make of this jam. You know, you talk about Wild Oats kind of being thrown in there as a jammer when she's normally a blocker, but despite the score... Oates has been fantastic for Team Scotland when she's had the opportunity to, but it's Australia again with control of the jam. Smash him is the lead jammer. Yeah, I've got to check my sources on that business about Wild Oates not being a jammer because for someone who ain't a jammer, she's, up, she's got that jammer star on her helmet quite a lot. Well, I'll credit that to you if, if, if she... Uh... <laughs> I'm crediting that to that one point she scored against Team USA. I think she's instantly taken goddess status right there, and they're saying, Wild Oats, we love you. You jam for us. 40 points to Scotland. 217 points Team Australia. 10 minutes, 54 seconds left in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Big thanks to our, our information guru, Honest Dave, who has been supplying all the information for this bout about the skaters. You can see how well that's been working out, can't you? <laughs> Yeah. It's Scotland with some points held high in the air as Oates posts four more to the score of Scotland. First points scored for Scotland in quite some time. You're absolutely right, Lyle. And now Bambi is just trying to slow the game down. I mean, the clock is on Team Australia's side now. As I was saying, they don't need to play hard anymore. They just have to slow it down, let that clock, clock drain away, and remember that they have plenty more games ahead of them. And that's what they're doing. Team Australia's just skating fast trying to avoid too much fracas going on in the, in the pack and just keeping their skaters fresh and safe for their upcoming games. In this case, you're probably right, Dave. That'd be a first. There we go. Rose Ruin quick to kneel down on that jam. You can see Team Australia, they just get as soon as they get the chance. As soon as they hear that whistle, they are straight out there, packed up against the jammer line. That's actually a bit of an advantage of having their bin there against the jammer line there because they get to be first, and that's where they want to be. So as soon as the jammer whistle goes, they can push hard against the Scotland jammer. We, jammer. we have Marshall Lawler stepping up to the jammer line for Scotland in the blue up alongside in the green and gold. Shortstop for Team Australia. Short stop with a quick move on the outside of the front straightaway and passes the pack out of turn one. Short stop is the lead jammer. Nice move by the fast Australian jammer. You're absolutely right. And she ducks and weaves and she layers herself. Her, she, she changes the height of her body and finds and she slips her hips in and out and just finds the tiniest of holes and can work her way through them. As she just did right there, she just slipped through the middle there by Neil. That is a grand slam. Five points on the board for shortstop. And team shortstop Australia. moving through the pack like she's got soap on both sides of her arms as she got sandwiched between two of Scotland's blockers, but it didn't pre prevent her from picking up the five and resetting the jam. I'm glad there were no cameras on me yet because I was just moving my hips and dancing and trying to pretend I was shortstop while I was describing that. Jeez, I hope that wasn't caught on film. We have number 11, Lady Killer, in the green and gold for Team Australia, up alongside number 13, Marla Mayhem, in the blue for Team Scotland. Both teams starting 
at a stance, neither one, uh, now Scotland goes to an E. No pack being called. Jammers get released, Australia goes to the outside. Marla Mayhem can't find a path and just tries to gauge and find a hole, but doesn't engage. Australia's defense gets trapped behind the three wall and doesn't get any help from her blockers as they're busy trying to hold back Australia's jammer. Doing a pretty good job though. That's right, both teams just concentrating on defense. Whiskey Galore holding Lady Killer at bay, the two 11s going head to head and somehow out of the carnage. Marla Mayhem busts through that pack. She did not get lead jammer though. She did not pass through the pack cleanly, but Lady Killer has yet to make her initial pass. Lady Killer is now hanging back, not even bothering clearing the pack. Just gonna start slowing the game down and trying to stop Marla Mayhem from getting into the pack. Rose Ruin loves this trick. Let me make it very clear. Lady Killer does as well. Blocking her out, blocked her out of bounds and then pointing to the referees. Oh, did you spot that cutting the track? <laughs> I'm sure the refs love being told what to do by the skaters. <laughs> Lady Killer ordering her pack. Keep moving forward. She, let's remember, Lady Killer has not yet completed her initial pass, whereas Marla Mayhem has. So if, she, if Marla Mayhem can enter the pack, she will start scoring points. Well, Mayhem's going to have to put... Gonna have to put the Australian jammer to the ground as Rose Ruin, Lady Killer, excuse me, Lady Killer, keeps skating, skate up with her. But four points scored on both sides as Lady Killer, questionably, and I, I was with you. I, I didn't think she made her initial pass either, but maybe she did. There's four points being scored on both sides. I've been wrong before, Lyle, and I'll be wrong again. Well, you were the one that told me that she didn't make the pass, so I was just going to go with what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Putting it on me. I know the story. <laughs> <laughs> F104, Marshall Lawler stepping up to the jammer line for Team Scotland in the blue, up alongside number 106, Tri Trixie Beltham in her second jam of the evening. Five minutes, 57 seconds left in the game, ladies and gentlemen. 48 points for Scotland, 227 to Team Australia. Back off to a really slow start as Australia trying to get their blocker out of the pack. Scotland has a full pack on the track, which is a, a rare treat for Scotland in this bout. Let's see what they can do with that full pack. When they've got a good, when they've got a full team out there, they know how to play. We have seen that. Trixie Belton, both jammers trying to gou gou gouge their way through. And it looks like Trixie Belton has busted out of that pack first. Rose Ruin holding Marshall Lawless at bay. She is a, a, an absolute cracker of a derby player. A jammer, a blocker. There's nothing that girl can't do. Trixie Beltham about to enter, t trying to take the pack on the inside. Got plenty of time. Marshall Lawless still trying to make her initial pass. Oh, a track cut for Marshall Lawless. And I saw it happen on the inside of the front straightaway as she gets pushed on the inside by... I, I believe Rose Ruin, because Rose Ruin just had Lawless's number that entire time. Uh, but she wasn't able to thread the needle and keep her skates on the inside. Picked up the track cut. Australia going to start this jam off at a power jam. And that's definitely one of the advantages of playing such strong defense is that you can force a, um, if you can force a penalty on your opponent, then that's as good as giving yourself 20 points. You Suze, you lose stepping up to the jammer line for Team Australia. This is her first jam of the evening. I believe her first jam of the tournament, in fact. And she is away. Let's see what she can make out of this power jam. Big opportunity here for the first time jammer to try to put this out of reach for Scotland. <laughs> I believe <laughs> the coach, Coach Mark Madden, is just giving every, uh, every player a chance to... Have a jam at this point. You, Susie Lucy, go home and tell her friends that she, yes, she jammed for Team Australia in this, the inaugural World Cup in Toronto. Puns aside, you know, I, I, I absolutely love Team Scotland's game earlier today in their preliminary bout. They fought so hard, but, man, Australia just putting on a clinic here in Scotland. Way too many penalties to stay competitive. You're absolutely right, Lyle. You're a cruel man. You Suze, you lose. Tries to take to the outside, but handily blocked by number 77, Crazy Legs, who I've said it once and I'll say it again, has done a great job in defense this game. We have seen her 
handing punishment out to the left, handing punishment out to the right, and doing so again. Lawless breaking through on her initial pass, and she had a nice boost from a teammate, but she wasn't expecting it, and she got pushed to the ground in turn one by her own teammate. We have up on the jammer line, number 182 fight car back on the, on the line. Alongside for Team Australia in the green and gold, Haterade in her first jam of the evening. And again, I believe, her first jam of the tournament. Bambi Smasham sitting in the penalty box as a blocker for Team Australia. Let's see what these two jammers can make. But I think Fight Cub, this is maybe her third jam of the game. And of course, Haterade's first. Let's see what's going to happen. Team Australia is keeping the game going slowly. Slaughter Daughter in no hurry to cross that pivot line. But she knows the clock is on her side. No point hurrying, no point trying to get into more combat than is strictly necessary because they have a whole tournament to win. Fight Club burst. Haterade, let's see what's going to happen. Fight Club takes through the inside. Lead jammer for Team Scotland. Haterade hot on her tail and deciding to start playing some jammer on jammer. Just something we all love to see. <laughs> and we see a little taunting from the back and a little, a little back taunting as Haterade Gives back to Fight Cub what Fight Cub was giving to her. A little sass from the Scottish lass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the crowd was loving that too. That's what we like to see. There was Hater Aid's first jam of the tournament. Nice work out there. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be seeing a bit more of that from Fight Cub before the end of the night. Absolutely. A minute 30. She's not going to have a lot of time to do much more of that. No. With the pack spreading out, Team Scotland taking a knee, a match proposal up front towards the pivot line and spread out as, Scott, as Australia starts back at the jammer line. Haterade off the line and pinball bounces her way through the pack. Picks up to control the jam. She's the lead jammer. Let's see what she can make with the pack is moving quite at quite a pace. Looks like Oh, we have a power jam, ladies and gentlemen. Marla Mayhem sitting in the sin bin. I did not catch what the penalty was for. A track cut is what Marla Mayhem did. So it's a power jam for Haterade, and it's another grand slam for Australia as they continue to rack up the score against Scotland. Look at that pack. Team, Team Australia sitting at the back of the pack and just keeping it moving slowly, not bothering to play. Not bothering to assist, just holding this pack moving slow. That's all they need to do. There's only 26 le seconds left in the period clock, one minute left in the jam clock. Haterade can take it easy. There's only two blockers at the front. Danger Mouth tries to block her out of bounds, but she busts through once again. There's another five points on the board. That's 15 so far for Haterade. Australia is down one blocker, but Scotland's down two. Pack slows to a stop as Haterade goes up against a two wall looks like one of uh, Scotland's blockers was able to rejoin the pack that's right with the pack moving that slowly there's not much you can do except to form up a wall the power jam is over Haterade calls off the jam the period clock is over and that's going to be it the first game is out of there we have an unofficial final score of 48 points to Scotland 247 points to Team Australia what an absolute cracking game. And we have a special report from Bob Noxious. Bob, what do you have for us? Well, I tell you guys, because I know you'll never be able to read my hand scratch, I just want to let you know that Australia and all you Australian fans out there, uh, your team will obviously continue to advance through the elimination bracket. You will play again tomorrow morning at 11.30. Scotland still continues to play. They do not have a chance at the title anymore at this point. But they will play in what we call a placement bout at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. They are still eligible to finish as high as ninth. You heard it from Bob Noxious, ladies and gentlemen. We have the final score up on the board. 48 points to Scotland, 251 points to Australia. What a sterling game late night, Lyle. Oh, it, it was indeed. And, and, you know, at first it looked like it was going to be pretty close in the opening jams. But it was really a tale of Australia just is really showing what they came here with a much higher skill set than I think what people expected but on the flip side Scotland just just completely hurting their chances by wave after wave in the penalty box 
Well, I'm still looking forward to seeing Scotland play against Argentina in their, to see their, where, what final rank they come in. They, they, can put a, they can put jams together. They just need to be able to maintain it for the full hour, which Team Australia showed us quite clearly that they can do. Well, Australia or Argentina hadn't lost quite yet, but it's looking to be much the same as Sweden currently leads 106 to 25. And uh, it, it's that, if, if you're still watching this, feel free to switch over. But it, it, the, the showing, the heart of these teams has been fantastic. And, and really, it's been fantastic working with you, Honest Dave. First time working with uh, an Australian announcer. I'm stunned that you can understand me late night, Lyle. That's what I'm worried about. No one would be able to understand my accent. But, Lyle, it has been an absolute treat working with you as well. I've had an absolute ball, and hopefully before this tournament is out, we'll get to do it again. Indeed. Don't forget, you can pick up any of these bouts on DVD simply by going to RollerDerbyWorldCup.com and ordering the entire 2011 Blood and Thunder Roller Derby World Cup is available. Keep watching live here on DNN. I'm Late Night Lyle. I'm Honest Dave. And we'll see you again as the tournament goes on. Two more days to go. Stay tuned.